Hello everyone, I'm back again with another tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you something very nice, something very cool which you might not know. So yeah, let's get started. So in this tutorial I'm going to uh, teach you how to send data from the Laravel controller to the Laravel blade and also we'll show you how to do the debugging. So uh, we have some uh, Laravel uh, debug so we will use that and before we use that let's make some controller in our application and send some data to our application okay. So let's create a controller php artisan make controller let's say block controller perfect so we have a controller now and let's go to the web.php and here instead of returning just like this let's create a rod.create block so here let's uh, create like uh, like this block controller index so we will return index from here okay so just like this open the block controller okay so I think I missed spell this C has become bigger block controller let's rename the file as well okay so block controller is just like this perfect so what method we are using it's index so be index now I'll just return view home and see if it works perfect so why we we have two files we don't have do we have a file like this okay anyways it's not updated I think so let's move on and if you guys uh, want any help go ahead in our Facebook group and post your question and I will try to help you as much as, ca as I can and there are other awesome developers who will help you to um, understand full start front start localhost perfect so we have this page now now let's send some data here with the category okay so can we, I will be showing the category here and here as well so let's go ahead and show the category and yeah so we can send that up using B but my first thing is that I would like to show you but let's get now uh, let's bring in the categories okay um, let's say we have um, Okay, so what we have to do is we have to take all the controllers that we made in our full stack admin system and um, not the controller actually, I'm sorry, it should be the all the model. So let's bring in all the model that we created. Yeah. From our previous project to this project. And remove this user because we don't require a user here. So that's fine. Now we have a category model right now. There you go. So let's bring in all the categories and import this class at the top. Okay, so our database is not configured. So we have a little full stack. Let's see if it is correct now. Unknown database level. Okay, um, I have just updated the .env.example file, not the env exactly. So there you go. 
So we have from here. Now let's move on to the homework history and see uh, our categories here. I don't need homework history, so let's bring in the category name. Here we go. As you can see, I have the categories here. Okay. So what does that mean? This means that um, those who do not know uh, anything about uh, passing data with blades. So uh, as you can see here is that I am I'm passing an array, an array of data and it has the category keys which will be available in blade find right away. And I can access my uh, properties simply just like let's say I want to access the Laravel. So the first part I can access using zero and then I can access it using the category name here. So it should be give me it should give me the Laravel the first item category name. So it's giving me the first item. So that's perfect. Now before going to look through everything and then uh, making anything, let's make the so we are making uh, we are all sending data to our front end from the back end. Now let's uh, let's learn something new which you might not know well, that I told you earlier in the before starting the video. So Laravel debugger, which is really nice. I wanted to show you uh, in my admin panel because this could be really really useful in uh, in the long term. So it would get used to using it. Uh, it's really nice. So let's see how to install that one. And let's move on. Full stop. So I'm installing this package now. What does it say? App debug should be made true. So app debug is true. One thing you should keep on mind is that this is a very heavy uh, uh, package, which means it will uh, significantly slow down your project. So it, it should be made uh, false in your productions, app debug false, so you don't uh, allow people to see what's going on in the background. So you should have uh, app debug true in always in the uh, production, okay? Uh, because you see, uh, if you use catch all for fail the route, make sure you load the debugger service provider before you own the app service provider. Anyways, if you don't use auto discovery, add the service provider to the provider's array. If you want to use the ticket to load messages to your ticket, so we don't need these things. And the profiler is enabled by default. If you have uh, app debug true, you can override that in the config debugger is enabled. Uh, let's see if we have it installed it. No, it's getting installed. So meanwhile, let's learn something from here. The uh, dot in with similar information. Let's move on to uh, to change the configuration uses. You don't really need all these uh, things if you don't want to use it, but it has some cool features which you might be interested in learning. Uh, you now add messages using the filter reader, debug, debug, info, object, words, add methods. Uh, yep, so it has lots and lots of cool uh, features. Try it out. And I will just try it out for this small task. It's not a big task for me to show it in the app debug. Yeah, here we go. So I had to do nothing but just uh, install this uh, comp uh, using Composer. Now here you can see I have everything written here. Okay, so the message and the timeline. Okay, I can see how much time it took. Okay, and then I have views. Okay, what views it returned. Okay, home then uh, layout a partial number of footer. So I can see what uh, views have been used by this home page. And what queries were executed? So I can see the row query executed by this uh, uh, by uh, this query category dot all was executed uh, uh, this row query at the end, and it took one point seven seven milliseconds. And uh, one of the interesting things that uh, how much memory it used and how much time it took to get me the result eighty nine point five milliseconds. 
and you can see the model was used so a lot of cool things can easily be uh, tracked so you have, here we go we have a two entry with flash and blah 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 it's a lot of cool stuff okay including the request so i think guys uh, if we use this one it you will get uh, you will get a lot of uh, cool information and we'll be able to debug your application much better and of course you can go ahead and learn a lot of cool stuff from the documentation but i personally use just for these things only because it might uh, it helps me a lot uh, to figure out what query is running on uh, in the background and what query is uh, performing better and performing very worse so that was the reason um, uh, i use this one okay so i recommend you to get used to using this Laravel debugger Okay, thank you guys for watching this video. In the next video, I will be showing uh, quite a lot of stuff, including this blog paginations and uh, looping through everything. Okay, thank you guys. Have a nice time. Bye.